Here we have an HP X360 that was mailed in for no power. Customer said that he believes it's a USB-C port issue. It's almost always never a USB-C port issue unless you see physical damage onto that port. I'm gonna take a minute to remove that motherboard and I'll be back. The motherboard is out. Let's take a look. The first thing I wanna do is inspect the USB-C ports to see if there's anything obvious. If there is physical damage onto the port, then we can change the port, but this laptop has two USB-C ports, so it cannot be that both of them are damaged. And that's why I tell customers it's never the USB-C port, because if one of them failed, you have another one to work with. And both of them look good. Quick physical inspection. These are the USB-C power ICs here. We have one here and one here, one for each port. So what we're gonna do is inspect the USB-C IC area of the motherboard. I'm gonna randomly test the capacitors around just to see if we have a short anywhere. Meter in diode mode. and rat probe on ground and let's randomly test caps on this side and test this diode here We do not have a short anywhere on this side. Let's test this area here. And look at that, we have a short here. So we have a short on this side here. This one controls one of the USB-C ports. Short, short. So these two are shorted. Let's go here. Let's test those two again. And as you can see, these two are good. So we have a short on this side of the board. And the diode is not shorted. Okay. Diode is testing good at 0.5. What about this one? 0 0.5, good. So right now, the only thing that I can see wrong on this board is possibly this chip here. We do have this chip in stock because it was an issue on previous Spectre X360 laptops. So we have a lot of them in stock. Let's go ahead and remove this chip, replace it and see if we can get this board to work. Right now, before we change the chip, I wanna test the USB-C ports on this board and we're gonna see what readings we get. Let's plug the charging cable in one of the ports and we have a meter attached here. We get nothing, meter is totally off. Let's try the other one. How does fix? Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I have a, uh, a water damaged uh, iPhone uh, 6. So, as you can see, one of the ports is showing 5 volts, 0 amp draw. The other port here, the meter is not even turning on. So, that's probably the IC that is shorted to ground or the area of the board that is shorted to ground. It's not making this port work because we have two USB C ICs one for each port. One of them is not good, the meter is not even turning on, and the other one is turning on. One IC can affect the other one, so right now the laptop does not even charge, it doesn't even turn on. 
So by changing the, I see that it shorted to ground, we may be able to get this board to work again. I've had success in a lot of those laptops that I worked on, but some of them, I could not get the laptop, the motherboard to work. So let's see if we get lucky here. We do not have any circuit or board diagrams for this board, so uh, we are limited on what we can do as far as troubleshooting this board. Let's go ahead and replace that chip. Short is not coming from the caps. The short is coming from the ICs. That has been my experience with these laptops. And a lot of times the diodes are shorted to ground as well. So a lot of times we have to change both the diodes and the ICs. But in this case, the diodes are good. I forgot which chip we are changing. Okay, this area is good. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this chip. Pin number one is on the bottom right. We have to keep that in mind. We're going to wake the solder balls off the pads here. But in order to do it, we have to apply leaded solder on top of unleaded. So the waking process is easier. If we try to wake unleaded solder, then we may risk ripping some pads off the board. And if that happens, it will be a lot more work to get this fixed. The IC is already rebolted, so all we have to do is wake the pads off and reflow that IC back in place. nice now I told you that pin number one is on the bottom right and there's an indicator also to let you know that pin number one is on the bottom right which is this dot here let's grab an IC I'm gonna add some flux here
It's nice to see that HP took the time to actually outline the area of the IC. That's not a practice used by Apple. Let's apply heat. I'm gonna start by heating from far and then I'm gonna go down slowly. We did see the chip adjust. Now it's safe to raise airspeed all the way up. Very nice. Chip is soldered back in place. Let's see if we can see those solder balls. Very nice, look at that. Let's look at the other side. Great. Very nice. Very nice. Meter in diode mode. Red probe on ground and let's see if we still have a short here. And we no longer have a short. The short is gone. Great, great. That's one chip and that's the other one here. And we are good. So we do not have a short on the board anymore. Let's go ahead and test. It turned on at five volts. And let's test the other one. And it turned on at 5 volts. <laughs> so now both are working. Before we only had one port working, now both of them are working. And all we have to do is connect this board to the laptop and see if the laptop will charge and power on. <laughs> okay, so Big Boss is going to reassemble this. We just got a huge shipment of Amtec Flux. It's been the syringes are being prepared right now. Right there, as you can see, this is the 559 model. What's up, man? man you got it's gonna... eight cases. So let's test right now. Hopefully we can get this laptop to turn on. It's time to close and if it doesn't work, I'm not going to be able to continue today. It will have to be done on Monday. Right now, the short is gone. Before, one of the USB-C ports was given 5 volts and the other was not giving anything. I have MacBook Air. Okay, so far so good. We do see that one of the ports is powering on and 5 volts. Now let's check the other one. And the other one is powering on as well. Look at that. It's powering on at uh, 5 volts. It's not turning on yet. Right now, one thing I noticed, I'm not seeing a light 
on the side here which could mean that the laptop is not fixed even though we got rid of the short and we fixed uh, the power to one of the ports there's a possibility that the laptop is not going to power on I'm pressing the power button and I do not see any amperage draw zero what about the other one press and hold the power button and amperage draw is zero so it looks like this is not going to be a fix for today I'm going to have to investigate further to see what's causing the problem it could it could be this big power IC here uh, I'm going to have to check if we have this IC in stock if not we're going to have to order one I know we have one for the 15 inch but I do not know if it's the same one that is used on the 13 inch spectrum let me quickly inspect this board under a thermal cam and see if we see anything obvious probably not because we do not have a short on the board as far as I can tell but it doesn't hurt to quickly turn the thermal cam on to see what's going on okay so the charging cable is plugged in and I want to just quickly inspect the board to see if we see anything obvious Uh, the two USB-C ports are right here the big power IC is right over here and we do not see any heat on it at all okay what's going on here look at that something is going on here Okay, so we have to see what's going on here. This thing is going on and off. Okay, let's take a look at this part under the microscope. This is the part that is going on and off. Let's test to see if we have a short of any type on this area here. I just disconnected the power cable. No short, no short. Okay, we do not have a short anywhere on this side. How about here? I doubt that this chip is causing any issues we do not have a short anywhere on this area of the board so I'm gonna have to do a little bit more investigation to see if we can figure out why this laptop is not working I'm very tempted to change the big power I see here on the side of the board uh, we'll see we'll see one last thing I did not try is to plug the battery and try to power it off the battery or maybe try to power it with the charging cable while the battery is connected and zero amps being drawn same thing what about the second port same thing and let's check the board under a thermal cam with the battery connected and see if we see anything different nothing different this IC relates to that port that we have the charger plugged into if we take the charging cable out and we use the other port this one is going to turn off and the other one is going to turn on here let's do it you see so let's unplug and put it in the other port And now the other one turns on the only thing obvious on the board right now is this thing that's flashing this chip I have to look up the chip to see what it does but that's the only obvious thing that's going on with the board right now uh, that's it I'm gonna end it uh, 
go home overwhelming number of things that we have to get done sometimes when you get stuck with things like this it can drain you down it can take a lot of your time i cannot afford to spend a lot of time on one item but uh, i'm not going to give up on this one easy uh, i see light at the end of the tunnel so i have to keep going until we see if we can get this fixed i'm going to put it on the side for now and i'm going to let the customer know that we are still working on this uh, we have a lot of items that came in that will be posted on our site soon we just got a large shipment of those boxes as well. Uh, let's say you are working on a phone and you cannot continue working on it now because you have a part on order or you want to put it on the side for now because you got busy doing something else. Uh, you do not want to lose the parts, the screws and all the stuff that you took off the phone. So you use a box like this. You can put all the small pieces here. As you can see, there are there's this grid here to put the screws in. And the second compartment is where you put your phone or the device that you are working on. This is mainly for phones because it's not going to fit a tablet. So how big is this compartment? Let's fit an iPhone 6 Plus. So that, that's a 6 Plus and there's a lot of room left. Let's fit my Note 9 with the OtterBox case. It fits. And that's a big OtterBox case. So this is meant for all phones big or small let me take the battery out a very very useful box and you cannot have enough of those we also have this in stock now the jumper wires we have the insulated and the non-insulated wires they will be sold in packs of two so one insulated one uninsulated if you watch the ps4 video that we did where we had to create all the traces on the board we had to run all those wires on the board. We did not want any of the wires touching each other, so we had to use insulated wire. We have a lot of cool items that will be added onto the site in the next few days or in the next week. And that's it, time to go home. Tomorrow is Sunday, family time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.